Okay, so here's, here's the basic idea when you, when you are using an interactive theorem proof. So over here, what is this? What is this? I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. <laughs> okay, so the, the key line to look at is there's a line there on line five that says theorem, <coughs> infinitude of primes. And there's a colon that says what it is we're going to prove, and it says for all n, there exists a p at least as big as n, so that p is a prime. Okay? And then after that we have a begin n, just like a slash begin proof, slash n proof. Okay, now one or two extra things to notice. Uh, back on line three, we wrote open nat, which means that you said, I'm going to talk about the natural numbers. And if we hadn't done that, this program wouldn't understand when we, weren't, when we wrote prime there, whether we were talking about primes and the natural numbers, or prime ideals, or something else. So we've introduced a bit of context. And we've also got an import statement up there, which means that we've, we've brought in some pieces of mathematics that people have already thought about and found and proved. So that's all the numbers. Okay. So there's the left half of the screen, and we've got our cursor sitting inside the begin end block. And when we're in that situation, uh, we look at the right hand side of the screen, and this is the computer now talking back to us and explaining what it understands of the situation that we're in. It says there's one goal, and if you read that goal, that's just exactly the, the thing that we said that we're setting up and trying to do. Okay? So it's just reporting that it understands the statement of the theorem that we're going for, and it's, it's ready to listen to what we have to say. What's that H? Yeah, yeah, great. Okay. So something um, here I used this slightly compressed bit of notation. I wrote, there exists P greater than or equal to N. And that's just some syntactic sugar for there exists P a natural number. And a proof that that P is greater than N. And so uh, in the goal of the computer's fitting back to us, it's just expanded things out just a tiny bit. But H there is just a proof of the fact that P is greater than N. Yeah, uh, given it's a political talk, you're allowed to heckle. So. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're in the big. Uh, yeah. Is the fact that you said like there exists a proof instead of just p is bigger than n? Is that something here? Uh, we'll get there later, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So we're in a begin begin end block. So we meant to start writing a proof. So let's do that. Um, so what did I do? I wrote intro n, which just means what a mathematician would typically say is let n be a natural number. Okay? And if you look in the goal state, something has changed ever so slightly. If we move the cursor before the intro n, we can see the goal said for all n something. But when we move the cursor after we've said intro n, all it's changed is that, well, there's an explicit hypothesis in our tactic state. Uh, that is, n is now some, some particular uh, natural number, and our goal is to prove that there exists a p and so on. Okay? So it's just like a, the first step in a, in a human proof. Okay, uh, well, now we probably should think about uh, what our strategy is going to be. And it's basically going to be Euler's proof or something close to, uh, not Euler's, uh, Euclid's proof. I like guys starting with it. Um, but we'll, we'll do the variant with uh, using factorials. So let's, let's introduce some stuff. So we just introduce a new number. And so I guess wrote there, let m be factorial n plus 1. I didn't write an exclamation mark like I usually did. So maybe you can see there's an obstacle to learning some notation in the language here. But in fact, everything is pretty helpful. If I just hover my cursor over fact, uh, some information pops up. So fact pops up. And always when you're working in these systems, you can always just uh, put the cursor here and jump to a definition. And you can see back in some other file everything that the system knows about factorials and the theorems that have been proved. Okay, let's get back here. So we declared that m should be factorial n plus 1. And then what's the next step of the proof? The next step is that uh, we should let p be the minimum prime factor of that m. Okay? So again, you needed to know what, uh, what that min fac was the correct way to extract the minimum prime factor. But that's okay. Okay, so, well, we're, we kind of know what we're meant to be doing now. Uh, our goal is there exists a p with some properties. And we've got the p that we wanted to use. So we, we're next going to tell the system to use that particular p. But I'll just do one other thing first, which is just that, and I'm going to certainly need along the way the fact that that particular p really is a prime number. So let's just assert that fact right now. And since it's got to be easy, uh, p was chosen to be the minimum prime factor or something, so obviously it's prime. Let's not actually fill in the proof now. We'll just write sorry. So sorry is the universal proof technique that just lets you do anything at all. Um, but of course, the system flags that your proof used sorry and reminds you that you really better come back and fix those later. But it's very helpful. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but it's certainly useful uh, when, you when talking to a computer like this and showing it a proof. Uh, you obviously want to give it the high-level stuff first, not get bogged down in the details, in particular details that you know ought to be easy. Uh, so you tend to use sorry a lot when you're just first explaining <laughs> the structure of the proof. Okay, uh, so now we're ready to say uh, use p. And so all that changed here was that uh, above the use, oops, above the use p, we had there exists p, an actual number, such that some stuff. And after the use p, well, the existential statement has got shorter because it now knows that we're using that particular thing. So what are we meant to do now? We're meant to produce two things. The proof that p is at least n and the proof that p is prime. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit strange that they've written there as an existential statement, but whatever. Uh, let's use the command split, which just tells the computer that we want to deal with those two things that we're meant to be proving separately. p is greater than or equal to n and p is prime. Okay. Uh, proofs should be well laid out <laughs> and structured, and if we've got two different things to prove, we should uh, ex express that we're dealing with one first and then the other. So we do this, and write some curly braces, and inside the curly braces, outside the curly braces we had two goals, inside the curly brace we just have one goal, and an error message at the end of the curly brace saying, hey, you didn't actually deal with that. Okay, so now we need to stop and actually do some thinking. Uh, we've got to work out how we're going to prove that this P we chose really is at least and so there's some maths to do here. So what I would propose we do is use a, just some divisibility arguments. So let, oh, no, 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 well, okay, sorry. I forget what I'm doing. Okay, let's do it by, by contradiction. Okay, great. So before that, we had to prove that P was at least N. Now we know this extra hypothesis that the computer named A for us, P is less than N, and I'm meant to be proving false. And then let's do some stuff, some divisibility arguments. So let's use the fact that p divides m. Okay, that should be easy because we chose p as a divisor of m. And we, sh we should have the fact that p divides uh, n factorial. And again, we're going to write sorry, but secretly we know how we're going to prove that. That's using the hypothesis that p is less than n, so therefore it divides uh, n factorial. And now with those two facts, we can assert that uh, p divides 1. Remember, m was n factorial plus 1. And surely at this point, it's easy. p divides 1, but we already asserted p was prime, and so, so that's nonsense. Okay, so let's not bother doing that. We'll just write sorry to get on with the, <laughs> the, the interesting parts of the proof. Okay, so, okay. Uh, what's the second goal? The second goal was just to prove that p is prime, but we already checked that ahead of time, so we'll just use the tactic called assumption which says, oh, one of the existing assumptions exactly closes the goal that we're currently looking at. And when we get there and close that curly brace, it says, goal's accomplished, you can go home. Except that back up here under theorem, there's a little orange squiggle that says, declaration uses sorry. <laughs> oh well, okay. So what are we gonna do? We could, at this point, go and construct these little subsidiary proofs of the smaller facts, but that would be boring. Okay, these things are easy and we shouldn't really have to think too much about them. So let's see if the computer can help us a little bit. What I'm going to do is just write here, by back. So back is, is, uh, is short for backwards reasoning and it's just a, a, a tactic. So a tactic is just a program that helps construct a proof. Uh, everything that we've used along the way, use and split and by contradiction were tactics too. And all that back does is tries to do backwards reasoning. It just looks at the current goal, looks at some lemmas that it already knows about, tries to see if one of those lemmas will prove that goal, and if it does, looks at what the premises of that lemma were and tries to prove those, and uses some slightly clever heuristics to decide which lemmas to try, and does a sort of backward search through the premises until it gets something. And here it succeeded. Uh, you can tell it succeeded, well, because there's no red squiggle saying something went wrong. But in fact, because I put this uh, question mark there, that's actually asking back, please tell me, what you came up with, and you can see this over here, there's some strange little proof here, uh, which apparently constitutes a proof that P is prime. Uh, so this presumably is the lemma fact cause, you can kind of guess from the name, is the lemma saying that any factorial is a positive number. And then there's, well, some arithmetic about when you're not equal to something if you're greater than it. Okay. Let's, let's, uh, let's leave back to, to deal with those details. It apparently succeeded. 
So let's uh, now see if this strategy works. And it seems it does. Okay, back actually is clever enough that it can just deal with all of those little goals itself. It can just look at the goal, go looking for relevant lemmas and handle it. And we see that actually at this stage, the squiggle's gone away. So we really have at this point got a proof. The computer believes every step of it. Uh, and well, we, can, we could stop at this point if we wanted to. This would actually be maybe an awkward moment to leave the, the file at. You might tend to, in practice, do one of two different things. Uh, back here is quite an expensive tactic. It goes away and does some thinking and some searching. And maybe you feel uncomfortable leaving, leaving that in. So we could, uh, um, just given that uh, back was telling us what it did, we could just go and copy and paste all the things it told us. Okay, as, as explicit proofs uh, in there, and that's fine. Now we have an extremely explicit proof of, of our theorem. But we could also go the other direction. We could decide, wow, back was awesome. It could actually deal with most of the problem for us. And maybe we can decide we're comfortable with using some automation to, to write our proofs. And so we could, at that stage, maybe just rewrite everything here. I'm just going to throw everything out here, okay, and write a really short proof. I'm just going to say, right away, use the minimum factor of n factorial plus one. And then uh, I'm gonna split, oops, I screwed up, I think. Oh dear, oh, okay. I'm cheating here, no. okay. Let's split, split, oh no, it's not gonna let me write. <coughs> oh, it's not gonna let me write I because of the way I was cheating, um, okay. Ah, oh, that's so frustrating. Um, fortunately, here's something I prepared earlier. <laughs> um, okay, so here's the same proof that I was just writing. Um, and why, why weren't that letting me type the Oh, because you, you saw when I was typing here, writing the proof, I was typing way too fast for it possibly to be real. Everything was just recorded in a little macro so that when I typed any key on my keyboard, <laughs> the correct character actually came up. <laughs> But then when something went wrong, there was no way for me to actually do that. <laughs> so, okay. Okay, so here's the short proof where we've really given just the really, really minimum amount of information. We've said, to prove this theorem, take P to be the minimum factor of n factorial plus 1. We've now got two things left to prove. That P is at least n and that P is prime. So handle those separately. That's the split. In the first case, the fact that P is big do a proof by contradiction and then just go and search for lemmas and see if you can do it yourself. And the second one, just go see if you can do it itself, yourself. And the computer says, yep, I can handle that. Okay, And so we're done. And so maybe this proof is, in some ways, well, you might prefer this one, because you've only said the, the key mathematical facts and you've left all the boring drudgery to the computer. 